to Tradespoon, my name is Lakar Pala, I'm CEO and founder of Tradespoon, and today we're going to have a weekly strategy roundtable where we talk about current market conditions and any questions you, about, you, can, you have about your subscriptions. For those of you who are new, welcome. If this is your first live event, do me a favor, type in first. Always want to welcome new sus subscribers. This is my brief bio as executive vice president and head of technology at Options Express. Options Express was an online broker dealer acquired by Charles Schwab in 2011. Uh, started Tradespoon in 2012. Uh, worked as a consultant and investor in several startups, several uh, financial technology firms here in Chicago. I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to all the subscribers because of you I'm able to enjoy what I uh, professionally. I've been trading my own money. I've been doing that for over 15 years, mentoring and teaching subscribers how to trade stock and options. And finally, I have a master's degree in computer science. Specialized in artificial intelligence disclosures are very important. Please read them. If you're new to trading stock or options, please visit optionscreening.com, this link, uh, to uh, uh, learn and understand the risks associated with trading stock and options. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not registered with FINRA or SEC. I'm showing you what I do in my own account based on my own risk tolerance level for general education and information purposes only. All right, before we talk about trading plan, let's talk about um, current market conditions. Um, let's look at the spiders. Again, the main events of this week were midterm elections, right? Midterm elections, you know, looking for a balance of powers, balance of powers. So it looks like House is going to be flip to Republicans and state and Senate is still kind of, uh, you know, there are three states left, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada, and based and you know, whoever wins two out of those three will, you know, um, will win, um, will control the Senate. So Republicans will have to win two out of these three elections, which we want, we will not know Potentially till December 6th. Potentially till December 6th. Uh, meanwhile, after the better than expected CPI data yesterday, right? Market kind of, you know, you know kind of a little break, right? This is the first good news about the inflation. Core CPI 6.3, expected 6.5. CPI 12 months change 7.7. .7 expected 7.9, previous 8.2. So you can see that inflation, probably speaking, right, it's still relatively high to historical measures, but it is peaking and slowly, months over months, slowly uh, coming down, right? Core CPI months over months from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. So it's a win for the bulls, right? Market has been extremely oversold as of late. And bulls, you know, took it seriously, and they did. did uh, the market did rally. So the question becomes, what's next, right? And the the, the major development is that the the ten-year yield across the yield curve. This is same pattern across the yield curve. Big drop in ten-year yield. It is uh, a little bit higher today from oversold situation we reached 50-day moving average but did break through this 3.9 level the support and now trading um, you know again retesting this uh, important support at 3.90 dollar also had a pretty big drop right this was the support 109 and just fell through it all the way to 107 level and weak dollar is um, also bullish for the market so the question becomes, you know, what to expect to the end of the year, right? That's the question number one. And then what do you expect beyond, right? There are two scenarios. I would encourage you to go through this exercise when you trade, right? You close your eyes, you look into the future, depends how long you hold the position. You know, if you're a day trader, okay, what's going to happen in the next, I don't know, hours, couple hours, you know, or, you know, a couple minutes, depending how long, you know, how aggressively you're trading. Um, if you're a swing trader, you close your eyes and you say, okay, what's going to happen next Friday or Friday after that, right? If you're a long midterm trader, you know, what's going to happen by end of the year? And uh, go through both scenarios and just decide based on observation, based on the data, based on the news, based on the price chart patterns, you know, which 
you know, of those scenarios, positive or negative, do you want to be aligned with, right? Uh, so there are two scenarios in for year end, right? We are approaching basically this downward trend. If you look from the beginning of this year in spiders, right? We've uh, touched it uh, end of March. Uh, you know, we touched this downtrend in end of August, and every rally basically ended with the, with this uh, with this. Um, you know, overhead resistance. So we are at 396, imminently trying to retest 400. Uh, potentially can get to four, somewhere around 410, right? Maybe even 420. But let's say core scenario, we go just, you know, it's reasonable to assume that we're still in bear market, right? Just one data point. You hear it on the news. You hear it from me all the time. One data point does not make a trend. If you want to see change in trend, it, you know, one data point for running uh, you know stock forecast toolbox for looking at the regular technical analysis you need more data right if you look for bottoming process you need you know few months worth of data to determine whether this is the bottom top is the same thing you need few days to determine you know whether you reach the top right it could be five days it could be two weeks right but tops also is not are not built in one day right you need at least few uh, data points so while we're collecting this data point you know my course not my but the, that's the question the course scenario is you know one of the course scenarios that you hear on the news and you also see it in stock forecast toolbox is that we will reach 410 you know and pendulum swings maybe 420 you know right and then you know going lower right so it's reasonable to assume that in the next we're in the middle of november you know we have christmas week we have thanksgiving week so two to four weeks you know scenario number one we get somewhere in this neighborhood right that's scenario number one right. so number number two you know that uh, comes out i mean some negative news right maybe uh, escalation in russia ukraine war maybe uh um, earnings season is over um maybe fed will come out and say something hawkish not sure what it is but you know we basically drop this is a false breakout right we maybe touch three four hundred level right and we quickly start descending down right and let's see right now 396 let's call it 415 so it's a 20 points to the upside, right? 20 points to the upside. At this point, we're probably not going to have a vertical drop, right? I don't expect any news except, you know, in December, but then in three to four weeks, probably also not reasonable to assume. But last support is, let's call it 360, 370. That's the previous week lower, 370. And we are, you know, 26 points below that. So 30 points to the downside right and 20 points to the downside right so which event is going to happen first right because in theory at this point you, we can actually reach 420 right and then we have next cpi data and then the fed speaks and then by the end of the year we can actually have a precipitous drop again it also possible right so i guess the better question is which event is going to happen first will one happen first or will two happen first right going into the end of the year which event is going to happen first, right? I mean, I guess the other way it also can happen. We can reach two first and then rebound to one. That's also possible, but more likely, I mean, well, we'll see. So which was the more likely scenario? Uh, which event, which uh, levels are we going to reach first, one or two, going into the end of the year? Good morning, Mark. Thank you, Kevin, for your email. Appreciate it. Faust, good morning. Mark. Okay, one, two, one. Thank you for participating. Abraham, Andre, Charles, Chat, DLC, Dan Faust, Faye, Keith, Kent, Kevin, Michael, Neil, Patrick, Peter, Rajesh, all the traders, traders. What do you guys think? One or two? One, 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 okay, another two, good morning, done, one. 
Okay, so going into the end of the year, right? Going into the end of the year, right? Most of you said one, and I also agree with the majority, one, right? I mean, the only thing that can derail right now this rally that I can see is the next CPI print. Let's say it's worse than expected, right? Or even if it's within the expectation, but the market is overbought, right? Let's just the completely possible scenario. We are at 410, first week of December, same CPI print comes out. We're still at 7.7 .7 inflation, months over months, 0.3 market can sell off on that news because the inflation is still high so that's also possible right and then you have fed speak and most likely fed will still sound hawkish right you know jerome powell wants to go into history not repeating the mistakes of 70s and 80s right if he comes out in december and says okay inflation looks under control i'm going to pivot and you know start lowering interest rates only to learn that the inflation comes back up. He doesn't want to repeat these mistakes. That's probably the biggest fear he currently has, from my perspective. Could be wrong. I don't really personally know him. But if I was Jerome Powell, that would be the biggest fear, not to repeat the same. If I cause the recession, you know, you know, a little, you know, mild, a little not mild. That's I think people will, you know, will not learn about that in the history textbook. But if I go as again, repeating the same mistakes of 1780s, and we already know not to kind of, uh, you know, letting go the pedal, the accelerator pedal too soon, then I will be criticized for, you know, you know, decades to come. So that could derail, right? If he says something hawkish, similar to what was in november that you know one or two data points is not enough and even though the rate of hikes will decrease the magnitude of the hikes will decrease but the rate of hikes or you know pivot is not happening right we're not pivoting and you know we are you know we might you know best thing that he can say in december from my perspective is that you know what we have two data points they're all both better than expected you know, we're going to raise 50 basis points in December, you know, 25 basis points in January, and then we pause. If he says something like this, I think market can continue at least the stop building process. The stop building process can move into January, right, into the next earnings season, and potentially, you know, get into this level, right? But very unlikely, very unlikely. All right, so a lot of you said one. Okay, great. The second scenario, right? You know, then what 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 happens in first half of 23, right? The question is, what happens in first half of 23, right? We have two earnings cycles to go through. One is the end of 2022, right? Q4 earnings cycle will start in middle of January, and then Q1 earnings will start in middle of April. Right, right now, most analysts anticipate that these earnings of q4 of this year and q1 of next year will be worse than they were the last earnings and the last earnings were outside of technology were better than expected technology was pretty disappointing right google amazons of the world microsoft so scenario one is that fed will at least maybe not pivot i think that's unlikely event but they can say pause right two data points better than expected we're going to pause and see, right? The market likes that. Market is waiting for that kind of confirmation that they're going to pause and at least not move to 5% or 6% target interest rates. And the market can continue going high, right? Soft landing, maybe soft landing, and then earnings are not being affected. And, you know, by the end of H1, we are, you know, instead of this level, we're maybe at this level or even this level. So let's call it conservatively, right? 400, uh, 460 from the current 400 level, right? We're at 400 level. That's about 60 points, right? So are we going 60 points up, right? Another 15% higher in the next, you know, six months, six to seven months? Or, you know, there, you know, Fed will not pivot. Let's say inflation is the same or worse than expected and the earnings cycle starts in January or April, and they're worse than everybody anticipates. And then we're down from current level 
I don't know, somewhere around, a lot of people say 320. Okay, fine, so let's call it 320. 320 is, uh, would be minus 80 points, minus 80 points from this level. All right, so what do you think is gonna happen? Which scenario, two or scenario one? And again, this is not a just a kind of, a, uh, you know, just uh, academic exercise that, you know, we have nothing better to do, just kind of trying to predict what the hell is going to happen with the market. This is, it has hopefully practical application, right? And the practical application is if you're an investor, right? If you say one, well, you need to start maybe deploying some of your cash more aggressively and buying equities, right? If you say one, right? If you're an investor, if you're a long-term investor and you say two, well, maybe this is the time to buy bonds and, you know, as we approach in 400 or 410 level, maybe it's time, it's start time to maybe reduce some of your exposure to equity, right? If you're a long-term investor. If you're a trader, short-term, mid-term, long-term, obviously it has uh, significant uh, consequences and for your portfolio construction and your full portfolio, your full portfolio uh, rebounds, in, right? So these questions are important and I encourage you to do this for whatever time frame you're trading. Hours, minutes, days, the process is the same. You go to the visual exercise, let's say you're bullish, and then you envision market reaching 460 level, but you also envision market reaching 320 level. How do you feel at 460? How do you feel at 320? Do you have too many positions? Is position size correctly? And this gives you a feedback loop to decide what to do now, right? If you know how you're gonna feel, in the future or what your life will look like in the future then you can can prepare for that uh, in the present moment so these future rehearsal exercises are extremely important i encourage you to do them uh, for h123 how many of you say one how many of you say two first half which event is going to happen first abraham one Kim, thank you Thank you, Kent. All right, done. The two, two, two will happen next year. Okay, thank you. Mark one by seven months. Okay, two, one. All right, we have more ones. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. Well, not pleasantly surprised. It makes sense, right? We just had a, you know, one of the largest historical rallies. It makes sense. At least some of you guys say one. Okay. Majority is set two. Majority said two, probably, you know. Uh, so I would also, I'm in the camp. If you follow my trades, you will see that by H1, and as we approach in 404.10, I'm going to get more bearish, right? I think we will reach close to 320, 300 level, if not more. Uh, okay, so I think we're going up to 400 to anywhere between 400 and 415 level. We're already at 400, it's reasonable to assume that we're gonna get you know, at least to 415. Uh, this rally is not just gonna, you know, the top building process takes time and usually, uh, you know, it makes new highs, right? After the initial rallies, at least in June and July, right? You rally and then you had another leg up. So I think something like this should happen again. It doesn't have to, right? Sometimes it does this, but more often than not, it's something either up or down, right? We it's either double top or double top with uh, you know larger, you know, kind of inverse head and shoulders. So something either like this is going to happen, what we we had in May, or something like this, or what we had in August. So that's my uh, and then and then you know I do think that inflation is more persistent than most people anticipate. The rates will stay stay elevated longer than everybody anticipates, right? And in the high interest rate environment, we know from history books and from academia that you know economy companies cannot make money, right? Even if inflation is going to drop, but interest rates stay you know above four percent or above three percent even three and a half percent, right? As long as the interest right now terminal rate is what, four and a half they're planning to stop at four and a half so the longer the interest rates stay at four and a half percent the 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 long the more the bigger the impact the bigger the impact 
to the underlying earnings, which is currently not factored into uh, most est analysts' estimates, right? Most analysts' estimates still think that Microsoft, Google, you know, they are 50, should be 50% higher than they currently are, right? So it's not factored into analyst estimates and not, it's not factored into any, any evaluations model. For that reason, I, I am in a camp which is probably majority of this time, if you turn on the news, you know, very hard to find somebody who thinks, you know, except few individuals, there's few individuals, but I think major, at least when I turn on TV, majority of the people are in the two camp, right? Professional traders or money managers. So I think that is course scenario, but you know, it doesn't have to be this way, right? One of the things I do realize, you have to be data driven, just like Fed is data driven, right? It is conceivable that, you know, we have, Maybe December better than expected inflation, January better than inflation, Fed pivots, maybe Fed will say we start, you know, slowly reducing the rates and earnings are not being impacted, and then scenario one will occur. Right? But you have to have an opinion to invest and trade in this market, right? And uh, you know, it just depends how much money are you willing to invest to support your opinion, right? How strong is your opinion, and more importantly, how much money you're willing to invest. Uh, any questions? All right. So, so, can't depends. All right. Um, so what is so now that we have uh, the view on the market, right? Once you have a view on the market and you have you know view on the time frame, you know end of the year end of this week, you know, end of November, end of December, how much cash do you allocate, right? So this is the most important decision. I believe I'm, we are in the bear market and bear market continues until the first half of next year. So I propose to have 50% of your portfolio in cash. If you said one and you think first half of the year we're heading higher, then I would propose 30% of your portfolio in cash. But in either two cases, the most important not to ever trade on the margin, not to ever trade on the margin. And when I mean margin, you, you know, a lot of our services are, um, a lot of our services are option trade, some of the stocks, some of our options. It means if you have a $10,000 portfolio, you do not trade stocks that are over $100. Right, because that means you're buy you you're trading, um, right? You don't you do not want to trade stocks over a hundred dollars. Right? Um, why? Because one contract is ten thousand dollars, right? Hundred times a hundred is a ten thousand dollars. So if you buy one call of a two hundred dollar stock, then if you get a sign for whatever reason, market moves quickly you're managing $20,000. So I propose not to trade $200 stocks on the $10,000 portfolio. I mean, if you really fall in love in the stock and say, Vlad, I really want to buy Microsoft no matter what, then you have to do a spread. And the difference in strikes, you know, should be no more than your allowed loss. And, you know, from my perspective, allowed loss on the $10,000 portfolio is 2.5%, $250. Right. And these are averages, right? It depends on your portfolio size and depends on how long you've been trading, you know, and depending on your age, right? If I have to plot age, we had interesting discussion yesterday, right? The risk versus age, right? You know that, you know, you take a lot of risk when you're early on and then it's, you know, as you trade. And I don't think it's even age. It depends when you start trading, right? If you start trading at 70, you probably also maybe more relatively more aggressive, but you know this is the curve of age versus risk. So, but you know at least for me, you know based on my age and my experience, uh, two hundred fifty dollars, ten thousand dollars, two and a half percent. You do not want to lose more than two and a half percent if you hold position overnight. Day trading, you have to have twenty five thousand dollars to day trade. If you're opening and closing position the same day, then it would be one percent. Still two hundred fifty dollars. Right. So those those are the rules, right? Every business I would propose to trade uh, trading as your own business, right? Some of you have your own, have or had your own business. 
some of you did not, but you know, imagine that if you do have a business or you did have a business, you want to have certain rules, right? You have to have, um, you know, operating agreement, right? You have to have an operating agreement in this operating agreement for your business, you have certain rules, right? For us to raise money, we have to have 65% vote, right? Or 55, majority has to vote to approve, you know, incurring debt, right? You know, every time we want to make changes to the company structure, you know, 50% vote, right? It's not 49% vote, it's not 51% vote, it's whatever written in operating agreement and that becomes like a binding document and you don't deviate, right? It's not like one day it's going to be 49%, one is going to be 51%. If you want to make changes to the operating agreement, well, you have to get all of your, you know, board of directors, you know, if it's a sole proprietorship, you at least have to amend your operating agreement, right? Trading is the same thing. You write these rules down, you don't change them on the fly, right? It's not like, okay, today it's going to be two and a half percent, tomorrow it's going to be three and a half percent. No, that, the, you know, the world doesn't work like that, right? These are binding documents and you take them seriously and you don't change them, right? So if, if your loss is approaching $250, it's $251, you're out, right? A lot of people ask me, Vlad, should I hold this position? My first question, you know, how much did you lose? You know, what, you know, what's your stop loss? You know, what is your rule about how much are you willing to lose on the $10,000 portfolio? So did you lose more than two and a half percent? Then you're out. doesn't matter what my opinion, you know, because my opinion could be market stock goes up, but it's going to go down, right? It's not like I know what exactly is going to happen in the next five minutes or by Friday. But I do know that if you lost more than $250, then you, your stop loss is triggered. You do not unless you amend your operating agreement, right? You should not deviate from your plan, right? You have to take it seriously. Uh, otherwise, you know, you deviate once, you deviate twice, and we, know, we all by now should know what happens next, right? At some point, one of your losses will be a lot more than all of the saves that you did by deviating from the rule. So you don't deviate from the rule. Um, So cash is important in this portfolio drawdown, right? So I proposed four positions, right? And no more than two and a half percent loss of your account value, right? This way, you know that market, you know, we have rallies, 20% rallies, and we have 30% uh, drops, right? So you know that market can move 20, 30% almost every month. But as long as you're not down more than 10%, that's fine, right? It's a very difficult market to trade. You know, 99% of the people have really hard time, you know, calling the bottom, calling the top, determining or determining when the market will top. You know, it's very hard to trade in the bear market, right? So for that reason, you don't want to take additional risk. Four positions, two and a half percent account value. The next question everybody is asking me, you know, Vlad, I have 90%, you know, in cash. What do I do with this cash? My answer is, is again, you know, if you have 90% cash, that means you're trading options. Because if you have trading stocks, you're not going to be 90% cash. You're probably going to be 50% cash, which is within the rule. If you're trading options, just remember you buy one contract of a hundred dollar call just because your account says 90% cash, right? When you look at the balance balances on your at your broker dealer, but you know what they don't show you is that you have ten thousand dollars worth of equity, right? Because options are derivative to the stocks. So uh, that's the most important thing that I want you to get out of this presentation is, is following these rules, right? 30% cash, 30 or 50% portfolio in cash. You do not want to lose more than 10% on any of these rallies or drawdowns, because if you do lose more than 10%, it's very hard to recover. If you're down 20, if the market rallied 10% and you were bearish, right? Or because JP Morgan you know, rallied 30% and you were bearish on JP Morgan, you know, and you're down more than 20% of your portfolio, it's very hard to recover. It's very hard because most likely you're just going to buy JP Morgan only to see that it's going to drop 40% in the next three months. So I encourage you not to chase the markets and follow these rules and not deviate them. What are some of the other rules that kind of help me through the bear market? You know, one data point does not make a 
trend change, right? One CPI data doesn't make the trend change in inflation, you know, just because the stock market, you know, rallied for one day, that's not enough that we are in the bull rally. You know, if boom, if we're making two to three days, higher highs, higher lows, okay, we are in the bear market rally. Talk about four positions, two and a half percent. You want to be alone and short the market at the same time. You can express your bias with the spreads. If you have an opinion about the timing, you can do calendar spreads. If you don't have, you can do verticals. But if you long and short the market at the same time, because you don't really know how far the market will go right now, right? At some point, it will reverse. It can reverse today. It can reverse first week of December. Maybe it will reverse, you know, end of January. That nobody knows because you need data points to determine when it's going to reverse. Since you don't know when it's going to reverse, you want to have long and short position at the same time. Maybe you want to express your bullish bias by having more longs and short, but you do want to have at least some of your positions short. Uh, allow more time, right? If you think market is going to reverse first week of this December and you're trying to buy December puts, I propose, you know, go to March, right? Because you don't know if it's going to be first week of December or first week of January, or maybe first week of February. So then you go and you buy March puts, right? So give yourself more time. You know, give your spell, you know, more space, right? A lot of people say 400 is the top, right? SF team, our tool, right? Our tool. Basically, if you go to Trade Spoon and you go to the Stock Forecast Toolbox and you type in six months. Well, the model actually sees 386 is the top, right? It doesn't see any momentum beyond it. Does it mean that the market just comes to a halt, 386? No, the, the, we're already at 386. I mean, we're at 396. We're already at 396. We've seen that we can overshoot by 5%, right? 5% of 386 is about 20 points, right? About 20 points. So 406, 410 is probably where we're going to top out. But then the trend is to the downside, potentially reaching 300 level by April, potentially reaching 300 level by April. Mistake would be to assume that this is kind of written in stone or that, you know, on December 1st, we're going to be at 340, right? That's not what the model is trying to do. Model is trying to show you that we are trading in the downtrend. It's trying to show you that at 386, we are already overbought we're already at the overbought levels uh and that you probably don't want to chase the market at 386 396 you want to start you know closing some of your loan position that's how you interpret this data um and the mistake would be you know a lot of people basically say well you said december we're gonna close at 340 right are we close at 390 and then i'm gonna have tickets open that says well you said we're gonna close at 340 but we close at 390 my point is that we're showing these numbers so you can have reasonable expectations about the levels but the the intention you cannot predict where the market is going to close on december 1st or 30th that is impossible there's no models that can determine that any it was any type of accuracy and if they are kind of accurate that most likely you know it's just a luck right it's a 50 50 chance models can show you the trends right models can show you support resistance levels but you know Please do not open tickets on, in December and say it was 340. Why is it not 340? That's not the intention of this screenshot. But intention of this screenshot to show you the downtrend and where the you know uh, support resistance levels. This is the most valuable information for the trader, right? It's where the support and resistance levels are, and what is the current trend, right? You want to trade with the trend. You don't want to trade against the trend, right? Uh, and then uh, you want to honor support resistance levels and make uh, appropriate decisions. Um, okay. Remember ABC patterns. And in terms of trading psychology, again, be aware of the earnings dates, right? Earnings season is winding down, but we have Home Depot, we have retail uh, uh, stocks announcing earnings, right? You have to be aware that Home Depot, Walmart will announce earnings. If you have a lot of exposure to these names, 
you probably want to rebalance, right? Because they will move, then they can move a lot, right? Walmart can move 10%, Home Depot can move 10%. So you can do cover call, maybe you buy a, stock, a put to protect your <clears throat> position, etc. etc. Do not chase the trade. You know, I think the best part of this rally is already behind us, right? That 400 level is already behind us. Uh, you know, at this point, you do not want to pile into the trend if you believe in two in the first half. Obviously, if you believe in one, then then you probably want to start, you know, piling into the trend. It depends what you ask, what answer one or two. Avoid revenge trading, right? If the trade runs against you, don't try to repair it by doubling up the size. Right. There's a big difference between dollar cost average, which I implement quite often, versus you know doubling up, right? It's a completely different strategies, right? The dollar cost average means that I take the $250 worth of risk and I only deploy, let's say, $70, $75, only half, third, or $125 of risk at one level, and then we'll do it in another level if it drops. Avoid whole trend, trading, right? Hungry, angry, lonely. Keep an eye on concentration. Everything is highly correlated right now, right? There are some rotations. You can clearly see that right now, uh, Spiders is up 40 basis points, but QQQ is up 80 basis points. So there is a rotation from <clears throat> value stocks. So value is actually down and QQQ is up, right? This whole rally, QQQ was underperforming. It was the other way. Everybody was buying JP Morgan's. They were buying Caterpillar. They were buying Exxon Mobil. <clears throat> now interest rates are dropping, so it's the reverse, right? So okay, fine. You can, but other than the, but there's still a high correlation. It's not like QQQ will indefinitely go higher and value will indefinitely go in lower. That's impossible. There could be some rotations from one sector to another, from one commodity to another, but it's a short term, you know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months, but at some point it'll come to an end. At some point it'll come to an end. So concentration is important. I encourage you to keep, and then try not to call the top or bottom, right? Don't, you know, I used to do it when I was young. I used to like listen to these analysts, listen to the research, and analyst comes out and say, okay, 410, market is gonna, you know, market is gonna stop at 410, like magically. Or, you know, when I developed this model, okay, it says 386, so I started going short aggressively at 386, and then 397, I'm like, what, what, what did just happen, right? What just happened is that models gives you certain support and resistance levels. That doesn't mean they cannot be broken. But the point is to change your mindset, not to try to call the top or the bottom, but try to call bottoming process and top building process, right? Right now, the question is how far are we gonna go? Well, nobody can answer this question because the top building process has not started. It'll probably start soon, right, if I have to guess. In the next couple of weeks, we are going to start seeing something like this. Then you can say, okay, for two to three days, you know, we're not going anywhere, right? We're not going anywhere for a week, for two weeks. Okay, we are building the top. We are building top. Maybe the second leg is shorter, lower. Maybe the second leg is higher, right? Like here. But this is an example of top building process. Right now, there's no top building process, right? We can continue going higher, like in vertical line. You just don't know, right? So it's the difference between, you know, calling the bottom versus bottoming process versus bottoming process. Be flexible. All right. Any questions? How do we help a trade spoon? Again, we have different tools. Stock Forecast Toolbox is my favorite tool. You know, I use it on a daily basis, right? For six months, for one hour, for 10 days prediction. Doesn't matter how what asset class you trade in, doesn't matter. You know, this is one of the best models that I have seen to show you the trend and support and resistance levels. We also have picks. Every day we'll publish stocks that we believe will outperform the market, again, based on a certain timeline, right? You know, Autodesk, Qualcomm, right? You know, 
So you can see studs that uh, we think will outperform spiders, right? Spiders are flat, right? And Qualcomm is, I assume, well, I assume it's higher. Uh, trying to figure out if my is there something wrong with my network or is it just some of these sites are slow Okay, so my network is fine. It must be the charging tool. Or tools. Okay, so it makes sense. Okay, so just slow. Okay, but that's so those those are the some of the picks. So Autodesk Qualcomm will tell you what the support and resistance levels are, um, and target gain, stop losses for strategy A and strategy B. Um, and then based on the outlook, you know, we have weekly and monthly, right? My favorite service is a lead service because you can actually participate live in morning bell and closing bell every day. You can see the recordings, but more importantly, you can actually see the trades, you know, what exactly I'm doing today, right? So I'm closing iron condor, right? So mosaic Fred doesn't owe us ice cream is Fred here. Let's see. Fred said, if we're going to reach 56, he's going to buy ice cream. Fred is not here. Okay. Uh, so we're closing Iron Condor. You know, I'm trying to close call spread banks. I think, you know, value stocks are probably going to start showing um, uh, top building process, right? So they're probably uh, overdone. And I would, you know, I'm going to close the call spread for that reason. Uh, you know, I'm closing the credit put spread. So you can see I'm closing my bullish positions, right? We're at 400. The relic, you know, is probably going to start winding down. So some of the long positions, not all, but some, I'm going to start closing them, start closing. Any questions? So that's a lead circle. You can get access to my orders and positions real time. You can enter your phone and you will get an SMS message. There are a lot of trading going on. So if you just want options, we have premium portfolio, one trade idea a week. If you just want stocks, we have robo investors. Same idea, you get access to position orders. You can access it real time. Uh, let's go over. So these are some of the trades from these services, right? Mosaic is iron condor, right? So if you look at Mosaic trade that we did in the past seven days, basically I'm selling premium, right? I sold 56 call, sold 43 call collected 45 cents, right? So I'm looking for half a, anywhere from half a percent to on the $50 stock, I'm looking anywhere from half a percent to 1% gain on underlying stock. So a lot of iron counters, some of the, I do uh, cover calls or option wheel strategy on XLK, right? By selling uh, the call and closing the calls or selling the put spread, closing put spread. If it comes close, I do have stock. And now I'm you know, slowly reducing my exposure by uh, closing um, uh, the sum of the stock position. So that's another example, uh, NOC, right? I've been trading around NOC position. So just pure stocks. Or combination is you know same thing. Still have NOC position, closed 5.37, close you know closed at, at 5.53. You know it's 4.99. You know I'm probably gonna soon again buy the NOC again. So those are the some of the examples from the trades from Robo Investor, from Premium Service, from some of these trade ideas picks. Uh, we do have the YouTube channel, right? I encourage you to register for our YouTube. Right, you can click on subscribe button. Uh, we do have a live uh, trading room without any financial commitment. Every Wednesday, uh, we have a morning bell and closing bell. I encourage you not to trade alone. 
you know, I always ready to make this commitment that if you commit to watch the live training room for three months, if you keep a journal for three months, uh, you know, I'm committed to that you will become a much a better trader, right? Your performance, if you're going to look at your performance in your broker dealer account for the three months where you did not keep a journal, you did not participate in our live trading room versus when you did, there will be a significant improvement in performance, significant, right? I'm willing to take that commitment anytime. If you know, if it, if it didn't happen, please send me a message. I will help you review and see why that did not happen. Any other questions? All right, it's 1022. Let's see. So value, you know, you can see value. I mean, again, one day doesn't set the trend, but if you know two to three days, we're not breaking through this level, right? That's the overhead resistance, then we're probably building the top, right? We're probably building the top, and, and the value stocks are overbought, right? Semiconductors, you know, probably not yet, right? Not yet. I mean, we're approaching this overhead resistance. If we do break through it, then you know, you have 200 day moving average. All right, what else? is interesting any other questions in terms of some of the trades some of the services All right, if there are no other questions, then that's all I have for today. Thank you very much. Keep an eye on the dollar, keep an eye on the currency. You know, based on the answers, I do agree. I think this rally has a little bit more room to the upside. I would look at your portfolio composition, just make a decision how much more risk you wanted to take, right? To the upside or to the downside, right? I think there is still a little room to the upside, maybe another 5% but I think there is a lot more room to the downside. So I would encourage you to be, not to chase the rally and take profits in your long positions, especially especially in value stocks, right? Technology stocks, I think has a little bit more room to go. All right, thank you very much. And I'll see you at the closing bell or some of you uh, next week. Thank you.